Above the Reality It's a series I've wanted to talk about for a long time. It's been on my mind for quite a while, but I never really got the time to actually sit down and write a script for it because I have to admit, when I rant about something, it's all over the place and very spontaneous. Ah, there's so much to talk about! I wasn't fire analyzing as much as I could to share with you all. There's some really interesting set designs, lighting choices, angles, blocking, and so much to talk about. Skylark has truly put in so much thought into this series. Whether he continues with this series or not, I will always come back to the episodes and be as awestruck as I was the last time I watched them. Sweet dreams I made of this. Something that you see a lot in detective and mystery film is that the audience learns with the main character as they navigate themselves through the facts. And the same is true with ATR. We don't just learn with Devery as she finds her way through the reality. We get a feel for what the world really is and what it isn't. There's a thrill about the unknown, the same thrill that Devery is always feeling. It always feels like there's more beneath the surface of what we're seeing and what the characters are saying. And in that, there's the danger and discomfort. Because when the first plot twist hits, we realize that all that we see might not be what they actually are. To miasto jest niebezpieczne. Niech nie zmyli cię ten cukierkowy klimat i sklepik jest pasalową elewacją. Kardin dawno ma czas największej świetności za sobą i to z dobrych powodów. Może przestań wprowadzać klimat sztucznej grozy, co? Nikt tu nie powinien ufać nikomu. Perception versus reality, a common theme of ATR. Some examples of perception versus reality can be seen in the settings. Cardine, for example, is very elegant looking. And the whites, pastels, and dainty architecture almost make it feel like heaven, a safe place. But this is during the daytime. As the day comes to an end and night falls, so does the innocent little facade. We see darker color grading and dim lighting, unsettling when compared to the bright daytime. You get the idea that Cardine is just too good to be true, and that is silently corrupted. The pets of Caddy know that. I also love how the mist that appears from time to time is so relevant to the theme of perception versus reality as well. There's a sense of secrecy and mystery, just the kind of atmosphere that lingers over Caddy and its disappearances. We also see examples of this theme in the characters. The first time we're introduced to Focus, his name seems kind of ironic. I mean, take a look at this. Focus, I was That's literally the first thing we hear about Focus. Even Quarrel's name seems ironic at first. In his first screen appearance, he was quarreling with Focus, and he quarrels with Devery a bit about the change money before calming down. But as Devery interacts more with Quarrel, his personality seems to be quite the opposite of his name. He doesn't want to argue or pick fights, and he lets other people speak more than himself. I love how down to earth he is with the relationships he has. It's clear that the people he surrounds himself with mean a lot to him. However, when it comes to focus, well, he becomes increasingly out of focus as the story goes on. More and more out of touch with the reality, the more control the other focus takes from his life. And focus clearly detests him. The way he so easily takes power away from focus is most definitely one reason for focus's hatred. But there's definitely something more something hiding within Focus's past. Perhaps in Shamrock Springs? There's got to be a reason why he, out of so many pets, has the copper frame glasses and the connection with the other Focus. And who is this other Focus? We know he's above the reality from his conversation with Cynthia Delaney, further proving that the reality is in fact deception. Even more irony. But other than that, we can only theorize. I'm going to end my breakdown of ATR's visuals today, but that doesn't mean that's all there is to analyze. In fact, there'll be a part 2 to this analysis next week where I talk about colors, another theme of the series, amongst other things. I actually got to know about Skylark from the LPS Tube Day 2023 awards ceremony. I was absolutely smitten by the set he had, and I wanted to know more about what Skylark does. I watched Skylark's other series like The Awakening and Divine. And you can see how much Skylark has grown and learned about filming, set design, and script writing. Not to say that Skylark's older series are bad. I often wonder what became of Astrid's Town. Maybe it's connected to one of the worlds in ATR? 
But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this analysis as much as I enjoyed making it. Feel free to comment below about any other theories or analyses of ATR. That's all for today. See ya.